think I'm going to die during surgery? No. Honestly, if I did, what would happen? Well, let me ask you a question. If you die, where, what do you want done with you? <laughs> we'll discuss that another time. <laughs> Can I bring you back here and put you on the mantle? Hello? Mark? Hi. Hi. Okay. Sorry to make you wait for me to get back, but um, I think Dr. Perlov is pretty clear that you need to have something done about this. The surgery, though, there's like a 90% chance that it's going to happen 90, uh, yeah. on the 4th. I mean, I know the conduit will be replaced. What's going on in your pulmonary arteries um, as far as the grafts that would be placed there? I, I can't describe to you exactly where the target areas are, but I, I think Dr. Perlov felt certain that surgery is um, necessary just from the standpoint of the conduit. The main problem is one of my heart valves is failing and it needs to be replaced again. And pressure is building up on the right side of the heart. This is not a good thing. My mom's trying to make me feel better. She keeps telling me, Mark, don't worry, it's just a little open heart surgery. You'll be fine in no time. And that might have worked when I was a kid, but it doesn't work now. I mean, I know what I'm in for. And all I could do is really pray to get through this thing in one piece, and that's it. Initially, congenital malformations of the heart were literally described as hopeless futilities. Every thousand live births, six to eight of the offspring have some type of congenital malformation of the heart of circulation. enough blood in the lifetime to fill the rose bowl to overflowing. Mark was born May 4th, 1973 at seven minutes after two in the afternoon. 